Hello my lovelies, welcome back to my channel. My name is Pinky and teaching you witchcraft and tarot is what I do. Here we are kicking off the new year doing a spell uh, that has been uh, requested from a client of mine and I decided to show you uh, this process. Now, uh, if you're having quarrels with your partner, with your lover, with your husband, with your wife, with your lover, whatever the situation is. This is basically to draw them closer to you, to remove any anger or animosity, and to make them more subdued to you, more docile. Um, this could be done for females or male, doesn't matter, or male and male for female and female, it doesn't matter. Um, however, it is going to be very important, and I will tell you some of the ingredients if you're doing it like an example for a guy, I mean, for a woman, then you would just use, instead of Jezebel root, you would use uh, John the Conqueror uh, root. Um, but other than that, all the ingredients are going to remain the same. So again, like I said, this spell is a little bit more complex because it has much more ingredients. It just makes it that much more powerful. Um, my advice to you guys, as always, is... Uh, when doing these types of works, it is very important, very crucial to ground yourself, protect yourself, and make sure you have a protective candle uh, that is going to um, create a shield of protection around you, especially because these are more dominating type of spells. Like I said, it is more elaborate. Um, it is a couple of steps to take when doing this, um, and that's the reason why we're using a lot of ingredients. Um, I always try to give you guys the more simplistic spells, but obviously more simplistic sometimes doesn't render very strong results. Um, and I am always doing, for those of you guys that are uh, baby witches or intermediate or just learning to experts. Um, so this is one of the more advanced type of witchcraft. So um, again, like I said, more ingredients. I'm going to go down the list of the things that you're going to need. So as you guys can see here, we have a, <coughs> excuse me, a plate that is a mirror. Now, the reason why we do this is within mirror magic, it is to amplify and to empower, uh, to strengthen, right? Um, so that's the reason why we're going to be using the mirror. You could be using a pocket mirror. It doesn't matter as long as you're able to set the candle uh, right on top of it. Uh, now, the next thing you're going to be needing is obviously you're going to be needing a picture of the person. I'm doing this for clients, so we've already prepared this um, for private <coughs> reasons, but you're going to need a picture of the target or your person. You're also going to be needing a white paper because we're going to be writing down the petition. Now, you're going to be needing a skull candle. As you guys know, skull candles are always used when working their head or their mind. Um, it is a more uh, putting of energy into it, and there is a process. I will guide you guys through it, um, but you are going to be needing a skull candle, preferably red or pink. Um, the next thing you're going to be needing is, as you guys can see here, we are burning the incense. You're going to be needing dragon's, uh, dragon's blood uh, resin uh, make sure, or incense. Um, so that you can, obviously this is a dominating spell, so Dragon's Blood is always used for that. I use it uh, <coughs> feverishly um, because it is one of the incense that my spirits prefer. So uh, we're doing that. Now <laughs> you're also going to be needing some Florida water uh, to cleanse a jar. You're going to be needing a glass jar. Uh, you're also going to be needing Jezebel root, if you're doing this, um, you're a female and you're doing this for a guy. If you're a male and you're doing this for a girl, you want to use the uh, John Conqueror uh, root. Now, you're also going to be needing some cinnamon sticks. You're going to be needing at least three different types of love oils. I am using Cordero oil, which is to uh, dominate, to uh, subdue, um, and I am also using controlling oil. Um, those are the two that I am using here as well as love oils that I'm going to be incorporating. But like I said, you need a, a maximum of three different types of oils. Um, you're also going to be needing some um, 
the Damiana herb. You're going to be needing some rosemary. I will take you guys down. Uh, <coughs> rosemary, some peony, and some rosebuds, and some lavender. Now we're also going to be using some star of anise, um, as you guys can see here, and cinnamon. You're also going to be using some uh, molasses um, and some eye bright powder. Uh, eye bright, obviously, to make sure to maintain uh, <coughs> the eyes or the eye set uh, from the target to the client. Um, and some love powders. This could be any type of powder that you prefer. I'm using the ones we use here. Um, and you're also going to be using some um, Piedra de Iman, uh, which is, uh, I'm not sure how you say it, uh, Piedra de Iman, basically some magnetic, um, a magnetic sand is what we're using here. And obviously because we're drawing in, we are bringing them closer, um, but we're also, obviously, <coughs> like I said, it's a dominating spell. Now, you're also going to be needing some of these um, tabs that we're going to be incorporating here on the candle. Uh, as you guys know, um, oh, really quick, you're also going to be needing some red wine. So those are pretty much all the ingredients that you're going to be using. Uh, make sure to also incorporate some licorice root. Uh, licorice root is very powerful, not only for love spells, but to sweeten as well as to remove anger. Uh, that the partner or person may may be having. Um, so it keeps it more like smooth sailing type of thing. And you're going to be needing some honey or some love honey oil <coughs> that we have here. All right, so let's get to the nitty gritty. Like I said, you're going to be needing a picture of the target. Um, on the picture of the target, what you're going to do is also a black marker you're going to be needing. Um, you're going to write down, <coughs> you're going to write down the target's first name. Target's first name, last name, and date of birth, okay? Something I did not tell you guys that it is crucial and very important in this spell work, you're going to need something from them. So this could be nail clippings, this could be hair. Um, as an example, if they spend the night or you live with them, uh, if you can get your hands on none of that, you can also use, as an example, whatever it is that they use to wipe themselves, whether it's a guy or female, it doesn't matter. Um, but you're definitely going to need some type of DNA. Now, if you can't get any type of DNA, then this spell is not for you. You guys cannot. <clears throat> I don't encourage you to comment below and ask if you don't have uh, none of you know, any type of DNA from them or whatnot, if you can do this spell. This spell is um, particularly for those that can have or that you do have in your possession or that you can attain some type of DNA or some type of something that belongs or that belong to them. This could be, as an example, if they wear a specific bracelet and they left it over your house, um, if they have a... I don't know, they left a sock in your home, something. Uh, but you do need something from them. If you don't, then this spell is not for you. And there's tons of spells that I have on my channel where you don't need any type of DNA. But this is for those that you could get your hands on that, okay? All right, With oh, moving along. So you're going to need the targets, first name, last name, and date of birth. And you're going to go down. seven times. <coughs> Excuse me. One, two, three, four. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, 
it's going to look something like this. You're going to write down target's info, their first name, last name, date of birth, going down seven times. Okay? Now, if you don't have their date of birth, this spell is not for you. Okay? This is a more elaborate spell. It is a much more powerful spell. And it is a spell that is particularly aimed at people that have been in a long-term committed relationship or that are living or married, okay? So, again, if you don't have their personal information, as an example, you've been dating a person for a while now and you don't know if they have a middle name or you don't know their date of birth, then this spell is not for you, okay? So, like I said, you're going to write the target info, first name, last name, date of birth, going down seven times. Once you do that, what you're going to do now, <coughs> you're going to turn it to the right and you're going to do the same thing, but you're going to write down your first name, last name, and date of birth seven times. So it's like this. You're going to turn it to the right, and you're going to write down your information over theirs. So it's going to look like this. So you have the target's information, first name, last name, date of birth, seven times going down. You're going to turn it to the right, uh, and you're going to do the same thing with your information. First name, last name, date of birth, seven times uh, going over their name, okay? All right, so once that is done, what we're going to do now is we're going to get a little bit of the love honey, or if you're using honey, um, and you're going to put some on the uh, picture, and once you put some on it, you're going to put a little bit of cinnamon, okay? And you're going to rub it with your fingers. Once that is done, we're going to move that to the side really quick. We're going to get <coughs> our petition paper. Now, what we're going to write here is you're going to write, you're going to start off with the first name, last name, date of birth of the target or your partner. Um, so as an example, we're going to do, <coughs> we're going to say um, Joe Doe, born, and you're going to spell it out, born, and then, um, I don't know. March uh, 3rd, 1961, as an example. And then, so you're going to start off as an example. Like I said, the target's first name, last name, date of birth. Um, Joe, and like I said, spell it out. You're going to put Joe uh, Doe, born March 3rd, 1961. And then you're going to continue with your petition. So you're going to be very direct and very much to the point. As an example, if reconciliation is what you're looking for, um, you would write down something like <coughs> um, the anger or animosity that you feel towards, and then you're going to write down your first name, last name, date of birth. It is now being removed completely. It is filled with love. It is filled with adoration. It is filled with um, attraction, whatever it is that you want to put. Um, if what you're doing is trying to strengthen or bring them back, and when I say bring them back, um, if there's been a bit of like uh, giving each other space or some type of separation, then you would put Joe, <coughs> Joe Doe, born March 3rd, 1961. Um, it, you are now uh, constantly thinking of and then you would put your first name, last name, date of birth. Uh, <coughs> the desire and want continuously keeps increases, uh, increasing. Um, you cannot overpower um, your ego and your pride is no longer existent. You render yourself completely to my love, whatever it is. Like I said, be completely direct and to the point. If reconciliation is what you're looking for, <coughs> what you want to write, I'll make it simplistic for you guys. Joe Doe, born March 3rd, 1961. Um, you are now uh, you are now coming towards me, write down your first name, last name, date of birth, for reconciliation. Um, you're promising and uh, promising to give me loyalty, your love, adoration, 
et cetera, et cetera. <coughs> if sex is, uh, sex is lacking, as an example, Joe Doe born March 3rd, 1961, um, I now, first name, last name, date of birth of yourself, become your weakness. Um, no, there is no other desire. You have eyes for only me. You get it. You get the disc. So once that is done, what we're going to do now <coughs> is you're going to put the uh, picture on top of the petition. And this is the part where you would put whatever you have. Like I said, if you have a sock, if you have their underwear, you would cut the crotch area, the private part area, um, and you're going to use that. Um, nail clippings, whatever it is from them. You would put it here. Um, once it is done, what you're going to do now is <coughs> you're going to put some of the uh, love honey or honey with um, <coughs> more cinnamon. And we're going to add some of the oils here. So this is where you would put your love oils as an example. Uh, the pega pega that I'm using and the mantawapo, which is to uh, pretty much make them docile, uh, the cordero, as well as the domination one, okay? So this is where you would put some of the oils. You don't have to put very much. You're just going to tap it. We're going to use those oils for the jar. So you tap it. Once that is done, you're going to roll it. <coughs> you want to roll it towards you. Obviously, you're drawing them closer to you. Um once you are set to go, you're going to need some type of red thread or red um, <coughs> thread or yarn. And you're basically going to do a little bundle like this, as you guys can see here. Okay, so I'm going to put this to the side because this is just for showing purposes. <coughs> we have the bundle here. So it's going to look something like this, depending on what it is that you're using. We're going to put that to the side. Now we're going to get the candle. You want to bless it. You want to, um, and the way to bless it is would be to put some holy water on it or some consecrated water and bless it in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. I bless and consecrate. I now baptize you, and you're going to say the target's name and their date of birth. Um, I am now... Um, as an example, I am now um, preparing this candle to empower and strengthen for the ritual that is about to commence. Once that is done, you're going to write down their first name, last name, and date of birth at the bottom. And at the top in their head, you're going to write down words that would associate with what you're trying to do. So as an example, reconciliation. Um you have only eyes for, you know, for yourself, your name, you put your name. Um, you think of me constantly. Uh, you can go a night <coughs> without missing me. Whatever it is that you want, like I said, use words. Like don't do sentences. Use words that associate with what you're trying to bring towards you, okay? Once that is done, you're going to put some of the oils here. Um, this is, or I will... Put some here. We're going to do <coughs> a little bit of the Pega Pega oil. And the reason why we're doing this is obviously these are love oils that you want to and really put your energy and effort when doing this. As you guys know, when do even before beginning this type of spell work, you guys, you want to ground yourself. You want to, um, if it's more easier for you guys to sit on the ground um, in a butterfly position, take a couple of deep breaths in and out until you feel that you're grounding yourself. You want to clear your mind and be very focused on exactly what it is that you're wanting to achieve, okay? All right. <clears throat> so once that is done, I am now going to do some cordero. And this oil is used when we're dealing with people that are extremely, um, and I'm sure a lot of you guys can definitely relate. <laughs> um, when you're dealing with the person that it is, is extremely <coughs> prideful, like stupid prideful, you know, like the type of person that, um, you know, is about to fall off a cliff and they rather fall off a cliff than ask for help type of thing. 
Um, when we're talking about relationships, this is not necessarily a good thing. Obviously, there's controlling issues there. And um, they just don't want to bend the knee, basically. And like I said, to the detriment of the relationship. <coughs> All right. So once that is done, okay, once that is done, we want to uh, incorporate a bit of the powders here, powders that you're going to be using. You can use any type of powder. You can use uh, Bega Bega powder, Come To Me powder, a hummingbird powder, love powder, whatever it is that you feel um, is being, you know, called to you. Okay. So once that is done, we're also going to incorporate a bit of Eye Bright powder here to the candle, specifically in the eyes. Um, and Eye Bright is used, uh, if you guys have been following my channel, you already know how we get down with these powders. But Eye Bright is <coughs> when you're trying to make someone see something, when you want to open their eyes, when you want to, like I said, remove that blindfold of ego and pride and all of that fuckery. Uh, Eye Bright definitely does that. It helps with that. All right, so once that is done, <coughs> we're going to get ready here with the jar. You want to bless and consecrate the jar. We've already done that. So we're going to pretty much jump into it. So what you want to do is you want to get your bundle here and you want to put it in there. <coughs> this is, like I said, we are using a lot of herbs. Um, it is a, a more than a one step. Um, so be patient with this. And like I said, you don't need very much of all of the ingredients, but you do need the ingredients, you guys. Um, there are some herbs that if you're able to, um, as an example, substitute them, then amazing. But <coughs> the majority of the ones that we're using here are very simplistic and easy to find. So you should not have issues with that. All right. So we're going to be using a Jezebel root. If you are doing this for your guy, for your man, you would use Jezebel root. If you're a guy, then you want to use, um, <coughs> hi, John, the conqueror root. Okay. So we're going to be adding the Jezebel root. Obviously I'm doing this for a client. Okay, so we're going to be adding the Jazaba root in there. <clears throat> now we're going to be adding some of the Damiana herb. It's going to look like this. Now we want to incorporate <coughs> some cinnamon. You guys, all of these herbs are extremely powerful um, when used in combination. Oh, my ring was trying to go in that jar. <laughs> oh my goodness. Does, do you guys hate when that happens? You start losing weight and then your rings get all big and ugh, it's just annoying. Anyways, all right, so... <coughs> Once you've done that, we're going to add some of the rosebuds here. There's nothing more powerful than when you can get a person's DNA in a witchcraft, as I'm sure you guys would know. I That's why I tell you guys, if you feel like... You know, you're one of the ones that I was like, oh, I can't get my hands on on their DNA or whatnot. Then this spell is definitely not for you because this spell is intended for people um, for relationships that are already stable or were stable at some point, even if it's like gone to shit now. But in the past, it was a stable relationship. There are certain spells. <coughs> 
that I see you guys comment on the videos and you guys ask and it's like, you know, that's why I tell you guys what spells work best if you're just dating and you're trying to dominate a person that you just met, maybe you shouldn't be doing that type of spell. Okay. All right. So we're putting all of the herbs and the <coughs> flowers here, the rosemary, <coughs> obviously these, um, sorry, you guys, if I've been coughing on my videos, um, this freaking cough does not want to go away. And it's just rosemary is very healing herb. And it is amazing when we're talking about reconciling or removing anger and animosity. Um, <laughs> we already put the rosebuds. Okay, now we're going to get here the star of anise. You just need one or two. You don't need very many. I'll put three because I work in threes. Okay. So now we're going to add some of the cinnamon. Be abundant with it. We're going to add more eyebright to it. Now, we're going to add some of the magnet, uh, magnetic sand. It's called <coughs> Piedra de Iman. I'm not sure if I'm saying it right. Um, magnetic sand is the one that you usually do for like <coughs> money spells, um, attraction spells. Um, but the Piedra de Iman... Um, has a more darker consistency and it's because it has more like real magnetic sand. I'm not sure if that's how you say it. I'll look it up, you guys. All right, so it's going to look something like this. Now we're going to add the love honey. I see you guys when you guys comment and I try the best I can to respond to all of you. Um, but yeah, I've noticed sometimes, you know, when I tell you guys, uh, that we're using specific <coughs> or that it's su supposed to, you know, every spell, there's a purpose and reason for it. And sometimes there are specific spells that are used particularly for something. Um, and sometimes you guys try to force it and you cannot force it. Like I said. Um, I see you guys saying, you know, I don't have the date of birth. And if it's a spell where I'm telling you, you need the date of birth, <coughs> unless obviously you're a practitioner, then you would know how to extract that energy. But if you're not, it's going to be really hard. So that's a spell that probably is not for you. Um, we cannot force ourselves. Uh, like I said, this spell is, like I said, um, for relationships that have been stable at some point or that were serious and it was a commitment at some point. Um, and the reason why I tell you guys this is because if you're just dating the person and you're doing this, if you're not a like an experienced practitioner, um, the chances of this backfiring are very, very high. Um, so again, you guys have to be careful. I try the best I can to give you guys advice and always give you guys I know a lot of people complain about me talking a lot on the videos, but I am the type of practitioner that will teach you why you're using certain ingredients that I'm not just going to blindly guide you to fuck up your whole life. You get what I'm saying? Okay. I hope you do. <laughs> so we're going to be using some licorice root. <coughs> As you guys can see here, I'm using one and I'm cutting it into pieces because they're pretty big. These are amazing. In my practice, I use these all of the time, not just for love, but for money spells and a lot of spirits actually like. Okay. So once that is done, now you have the option 
before I forget, let me add some of the lavender. Lavender is marvelous, not only to strengthen and empower the love, but also for healing purposes. And there is a lot of healing that needs to happen in this relationship. Okay. <laughs> All right. So once that is done, now you don't have this. You don't have to use this. This is, I didn't mention this because I know that sometimes it's hard to get specific ingredients. But if you're able to get your hands on some lodestone, some red lodestones, then you definitely want to incorporate it in this spell. Um, obviously, lodestones are marvelous for attracting. Let me use two because it's for obviously two people. Um but the red lodestone is amazing when we're talking about love spells, you guys. Um, it is actually one of the ingredients that I highly recommend when doing love workings. Um, and, you know, we use it to feed uh, certain spirits that I work with. Um, depending on whatever deity you work with, whatever saint you work with, you want to always incorporate um, some of the you know, some of the ingredients that you would want to offer them. <clears throat> As an example, when I'm working with Saint Simon, I <coughs> have a tendency of burning uh, copal, copal um, and uh, tobacco because that's something that I always offer him. So you want to make sure that you are, you know, incorporating whatever ingredients or whatever it is that you like or that you've known that your deity loves when we're talking about like offerings that you do to them. Um, so again, you got to learn to incorporate those things in into the, your spell work so that you can empower it, you can strengthen it. Um, <clears throat> okay, so we are done here. Now we're going to add the oils. <coughs> like I said, you just need three. You don't need more than three, but we are going hard so we're using pega pega we're using amansa wapo um which is to make them more docile um, more submissive to remove the anger and the pride that they have and cordero uh, cordero is an oil very famously used um <clears throat> in witchcraft that is latin witchcraft um and domination oil. All right. Now we're going to add the molasses. <clears throat> and molasses glues. It, it, we use it almost like, um, like a glue or like a paste metaphorically for relationships to glue them back together to strengthen them as well as to make it stick so all right so once that is done what you're going to do now is you're going to add the wine now my lovelies i told you guys that this is a multi-step um and the reason i said that is because what we're going to do is I'm trying to open this. Oh, I'm not sure I can open it. Give me one second, you guys. <clears throat> I'm not sure I'm going to be able to open this. Okay, so we are going to pour it. Now, the secret here is to not pour it all the way up. Why? Because, like I said, it is a multi-step spell. So once this is done, what we're going to do now is we are going to... Give me one second and let me bless it. And I'll
Okay. So once we are done, like I said, you don't want to fill it up all the way to the top because there is another step that we do at the end of this spell. Okay. All right. So once that is done, we are going to get the mirror. We're going to place the jar on top of it and the candle. Let me move this out of the way. <clears throat> okay. So what you're going to do now is we're going to get the needles. And you're going to put them through the candle. Now, when you're going with it, when you're going, like, putting them in, <clears throat> you're going to say, I penetrate your mind. I penetrate your mind. Body and spirit. And you want to use black or red. needles okay i penetrate your mind body and spirit you are thinking of me now you think of me day and night you submit to me you have eyes for only me and what you're doing here is I penetrate your mind, body, and spirit. Really putting the energy and the effort. Okay, and every time you're putting it in with intention, with intention, with power. All right. All right. So once that is done, what we're going to do now, <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> what we're going to do now is we're going to add some of the Damiana around. Whoops. <clears throat> and some of the rose buds. Some of the rosemary. When you're doing these types of spells, it is very important. It is very crucial. Um, and it also determines your outcome when you must do uh, these spells with power, with authority, without doubting, without any reservations about what you're doing. It's you got to go into it with power. you got to go into it with 
like knowing what the hell you're doing. Um, if you need to rewatch this video uh, until you get it, write down your notes, etc. Definitely do it, you guys. But do it knowing exactly what it is that you're doing, because, like I said, <clears throat> this is not definitely not for beginners, um, and you do not want to have your energy, you know all over the place and not be grounded when you're doing this because this can quickly go back so <clears throat> okay you guys so once that is done it's going to look something like this now the crucial part here is this okay so you're going to leave it in your altar or wherever you do your workings you're going to light that candle <clears throat> and when you light the candle, you're going to chant this chant. <clears throat> you're going to say, I call to your heart, hear my loving request. Come to me now, know our love is blessed. I call to your heart, your free will I remove. You obey and say and do as I say. Come, my love, in this very hour. You're going to repeat this three times. Once you've repeated it three times, and like I said, with power, with authority, do not hesitate, do not fear what you're saying. Do it knowing, without a doubt, own those words. You're going to do it three times. Once you've recited that chant three times, you're going to light the candle. Now you're going to light the candle and you're going to let the candle completely consume itself. Now, if it burns quicker than two days, it is auspicious. And what it's saying is basically that the <clears throat> results are going to be rendered very quickly. If it takes more than two days, it means you're going to have to be patient because the results may not come in very quickly. It means that it is removing and it is basically melting away the blockages that are keeping you guys from becoming that stable relationship or getting that relationship stable the way it was at some point. Um, if it's longer than three days, you have to wait it out until it is completely consumed. Now, once this candle is consumed, as an example, you have it lit tonight and it is about to go out, right? It's about to be completely extinguished. Know and understand <clears throat> that the very next day, right? You know that it's going to be extinguished anytime, any moment now. Know in your mind that when you go to bed, the first thing you're going to do when you wake up is you're going to collect the first morning urine that you take, okay? This is crucial and do not forget because <laughs> if you forget, you have to redo the whole process, okay? So like I said, you are about, this candle is about to consume itself completely. And you're, before you go to bed, it's like almost out already. I know in my mind that the next day, the first thing I'm going to do is collect the first urine in the morning that I take. And what you're going to do is you're going to pour that urine on this jar. You don't need very much of it. Like I said, this is why you don't want to fill it up all the way to the top with uh, the wine. Okay? <clears throat> when this candle is consumed... You're going to collect, the very next day, you're going to collect the first urine of your morning, and you're going to pour it on this jar. Do not fill it all the way to the top, because once you do that, what you're going to do is you're going to then add white and brown sugar. Okay, so like I said, this is why I told you guys it's a multi-step spell. And you have to remember, do not forget, because if you miss a step, you're going to have to do this all over again. Um, like I said, once you chant, you're going to light the candle. 
And when you light the candle, you're going to let it completely consume itself. As quickly as it burns down, it means that's how quickly you're going to get results. Once that is done, <coughs> let's say it goes out tonight, then I know that the next day in the morning, I need to collect the first urine that I, you know, go to the restroom and I pee. I'm going to get it um, in a container or something. You're going to pour it on this jar and then you're going to add brown and white sugar. Both. You need both. Okay. Once you do that, then you're going to cover the jar and keep it in a dark place. Do not, do not by any means allow your target or your person to see this. Let's say you've reconciled. Let's say you are a bit scared that they may see it, right? Or let's say they came back to your house or, you know, your girlfriend came back and you're scared that they keep it in a closet, keep it in a safe place where you know no one's going to touch it especially them. Once they lay eyes on this, the spell is broken, okay? Even if they just look at it, even if they don't know what it is, once they lay eyes on it, it is broken. And then you have to redo this again, okay? So like I said, once this is done, once you've taken the first urine of the morning, you've poured it on this jar, and you add the brown and white sugar you're going to seal it, you're going to close it, <coughs> cover it, and you're going to put it in a dark place. Uh, as an example, you would keep it in your altar or you would keep it under your bed or in your closet, somewhere where you know that it's not going to get any type of sunshine and that it, your partner's not going to see it. Like I said, once they lay eyes on it, even if they don't know what it is, but they see it, it's broken and you have to redo it all over again, okay? So once it's done, there's reconciliation, they came back, et cetera, et cetera. You have two options. Now, one of the options is you can <coughs> bury this um, in your home, in the entrance of your home. As an example, if you guys live together, you can bury it in the entrance of your home deep enough where you know it's not going to break or that it's not going to come up if you know rain etc um, the other option would be to hide it underneath a plant and then plant something over it so that they never see it um, and it's in a shaded area but you don't dispose of it because the moment you dispose of it <coughs> if you you know are reconciled or the relationship is going amazing and everything is going amazing you don't want to disturb that um, so again, you want to keep it in a place, or like I said, if possible, keep it in um, a closet. As an example, if you know your partner's not going to go into your stuff or whatever, then that's perfectly fine. Um, my advice would be to put it in a, get yourself a wooden box so that you can keep it there. Um, keep it there for safekeeping. Like I said, uh, it is important that they don't lay eyes on this. When do you do this? You do this in the beginning of the new moon all the way to full moon. You cannot do it on the night of the full moon. Why? Because it is a three-step process um, and you don't want to conclude it when the moon is waning. So my advice, do it anytime during the new moon or waxing moon so that you can end or get to the point of completing when it's already full moon because that energy is you know, empowering. So you want to use that type of energy. All right, my lovelies. Okay, I hope that you guys enjoyed. I know that it was a little bit longer. It is a bit more complex. It is also a much more powerful spell. So um, if you do do the spell, come back, let us know what your results were. I wish you guys the very best and stay tuned. We have tons of spell videos coming your way. Till then, see you guys soon. Bye.